What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Next Level Teaching. I'm your host, Jeremy Anderson, here with my super dope co-hostess with the mostest, Miss Tori Rodriguez, <laughs> aka T Rod. What's up? Hey Jay. Bah, you good? I'm great. How are you? Man, I'm good. We got Miss Alicia Bailey in the I know. Music. I'm oh. excited. I'm super excited. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. How I'm, was your weekend, Tori? It was good. You know, got the, the pearly whites cleaned. Oh, yeah. yeah. So feel that's like the Make you not want to eat nothing. Uh, it, Stay actually, away from coffee. No, I definitely just had coffee, actually. Okay. <laughs> right. Listen, right. it was at 7 30 in the morning. Mm. So your girl a little tired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but here we go. So but we needed the coffee here and we we're go. actually good. Let me tell you though, <laughs> Ryan and I struggled with the Nespresso because I'm a I'm a Keurig kind of gal. Oh yeah. Um well that's upstairs. Yeah, I know. But yeah, the, like the Nespresso was just here, so yeah. I was just like, oh, let's try it. Yeah, I struggled with like Figuring out which way you're supposed to put that thing in, and then cl- oh, you, did you never get none? No, I'm, no, I got some. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Like I, I drank my coffee already. <laughs> like I'm a lot more awake than I was okay. 20, go. 30 minutes there ago. But yeah. yeah, you need some coffee, Alicia. I'm you good. good. Thank you so much. Uh, some yeah. water, she, bottle of water, she, glass she of wine, or anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, oh, <laughs> you I'll wait. <laughs> that mimosa, right? You know what Sounds good. But I'll yes. wait. <laughs> uh, Yep. Yeah. Well, yep. Jay, I feel like we haven't let the people know who we are here at Next Level Teaching in a couple of episodes. So why don't you yep. um, remind those, especially for those people that are new to uh, Next Level Teaching. Absolutely. Why don't you tell them who we are here? Simple. We want you to laugh, learn, and live your best life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So we're going to get some laughter. We're going to learn something new. And we're going to show you how you can live your best life in and outside the classroom. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So we bring in super awesome guests like Miss Alicia Bader. Yes. And we want to hear about <laughs> you and your story. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. How did you first know that you were called? Because here at Next Level Teaching, we don't believe this is an occupation or just a career. Right. It's a calling. You got to be called. Yeah. And Absolutely. you got to be a little crazy. Just a little Let's bit. be honest. <laughs> and I know you're a middle school, correct? Yes. Middle school mm-hmm. English teacher. So just like me, and we are definitely, especially... English and math because we are the like priority subjects. Yes, yes. So we are definitely crazy because Absolutely. all the pressure is on us. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, what got you here? So <laughs> I have a twin sister okay. and she's been in education for years. Identical or Siamese? Identical. Who's, yes. Who came out Actually, first? Actually, we did a twin study and they said that we were fraternal, but my parents were like, no, you guys are definitely identical. <laughs> right, um, right. I came out first. Actually, I covered her the whole time and so really? my parents didn't realize they were having two. Oh, <laughs> <shut the front> <laughs> <door>. <laughs> They had no idea. Okay. So they said, wait a minute, there's another one. She's not breathing. Let's uh, resuscitate her. And, you know, okay. here we are. <laughs> Time out. We got to go back. <laughs> got to go back. That is amazing. Yes. That's a so little they're like, scary, oh, not going to lie. Cute little, did they know you were a girl? <laughs> they, they didn't know I was a girl. So they were like, oh, we got a yeah. cute little girl. And they were like, hold on, there's one more in there. Exactly. We got I one more. I couldn't imagine. Yeah. yeah. I remember when they cut and took Jewel out. I couldn't imagine. They were like, hold on, there's one more. Right. <laughs> Well, because I'd be like, Wait, you huh? already got the nursery set up, right. but you got the nursery set up with one crib, one crib, not two, one of everything. Right. So it was a total shock for my parents. So in fact, we don't have middle names because of that. They were like in shock. They're like, okay, we're just gonna go with Alicia, Felicia. We're good. <laughs> Alicia, so, Felicia, yeah. <laughs> and they just stuck with it. They just stuck with it. I mean, it was just a, a total shock. So that's pretty cool. Yes. But then she came out not breathing, so they had to resuscitate. They had to resuscitate her. Right. her. Um, she's really good. Yes, praise God. She's really good now. And um, so education has always been a passion for her. And she said, Alicia, you know, you would make a great teacher. My mm. uh, bachelor's degree is in communication. My first degree, and um, I've always loved to write. Mm. Um, and so I've been writing for a while. And um, she said, you know, English would be good. for for you and I've always liked to help people, particularly mm-hmm. our young people, because mm-hmm. they need it. Yeah. And um, and so once I got in the motion of doing things, I said, you know what? You're right. Like I I it just it sparked something in me, you know? Mm. And so she said, well, I'll kind of show you the ropes. She had a lot of uh, educators um, that were friends of hers. And mm. um, I just kind of rolled into it. And, and it's just been, it's been so good So what did you do before? Since. Before I was in banking. Yeah, I was a personal banker um, for Wachovia. We were bought out by Wells Fargo. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, I just knew it wasn't for me. You mm. know, I just knew that that was not my niche. And so I went back to school um, and got certified as an English teacher. And so yeah. your sister was already teaching. She was already teaching. So she was like, come on, girl, you join me in she the She said, womb. come on. Join me in this profession. Yes, yeah. <laughs> she said, come on, you would be awesome. And, um, you know, and she was really like a powerhouse at her school. Hmm. And she said, I'll show you all the ropes. And I got into the program, um, finished up, and um, started teaching. By my third year, I uh, received Teacher of the Year. Wow. So I'm really proud come on, of that. Come on, come on, let's um, go. Yes, and so. Um, well, okay. You know, and, <laughs> and I say that with humility because it's it's just, you know, 
in the world that we're living in now, mm -hmm. you know, we need teachers that are passionate, yes. teachers that care about the kids, Come and on. teachers that teach those kids as if they were our own, Come you on. know? Yeah. Um, because they're faced with so much, and it's more than just academics. It's social skills. It's just that tender, loving care that they may not get yep. elsewhere. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really, really um, enjoy it, and I feel like, um, you know, when everything is said and done, I can look back and say, you know, I was able to impact young yeah. people in such a way to where, you know, they become us, you know, pretty yeah. soon. So, I'm, so. I'm intrigued, uh, Tori, you probably was wondering the same thing. If you've got the finance banking background, yeah. you Why never you thought math? do math. Because so, math ain't my thing either. I, I'm just well, curious. So <laughs> I have a story on that. Okay. <laughs> so Tell math is here. definitely not my thing. Oh, really? Um, you no. just like that money. <laughs> no. Hey, hold yes, on Yes, I can now. count the dividends. Okay, but there we go. No, I, math is definitely not my okay. thing. I've always had a passion for English. I mean, literally, I remember when I was in the first grade, I had a teacher, uh, God rest her soul, she spoke life into me, and she would actually take me around to different classrooms, and she said, she's going to be something one day because the way wow. I read with expression, the, the way I, you know, articulated my words, mm -hmm. she said, you know, she's going to be something. And so even after I switched school, she followed me. She would send me books. So I was always reading. I was always mm -hmm. writing. I would win like, you know, oratorical contests or writing contests. Mm -hmm. um, but that was just my passion, communication. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to teach it, you know, is definitely, you know, something that I appreciate. Can so, we just cool. pause and talk about how amazing that teacher is. Yes. The fact that she took you around to other classes, yeah. showed you off because who doesn't want to be shown off? Exactly. Right. <laughs> like, like seriously, yeah. think about it. And, and then she spoke life over you. Yes, she sure did. She is going to be someone she someday. Sure did. Mm -hmm. And we know that the power of the tongue. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, you can speak there. life or death over someone Absolutely. and we have to be so careful because I, had a student a couple of years back who she had a long-term sub in sixth grade because I teach seventh grade. Okay. And that long-term sub spoke death mm. wow. over math and her. Yeah. And I watched her just spiral because it, it was in her head and she has the, had this very closed mindset of mm. this is what this teacher said. They told me that I was never going to be good at math. And so she believed it. And no matter how much, I was like, you can do this. Yes, you can. Yeah. I believe in you. Every single time that she struggled on an assignment, it just spiraled her down further and further. And she loved me and I loved her. It was yeah. nothing to do with that, but it was what had already been, been spoken, spoken over her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's deep. And, yeah, and we have to be so. so careful with that as teachers. Definitely. Because what we say... We have an impact. Yeah, absolutely. What we say matters to kids. It matters so much and they look up to us. And so what I tell people all the time, you have to build a strong, positive relationship. It starts there. Yeah. They're not going to okay. learn anything from you. They're not going to be open to learning anything until they realize that this person cares. Take special interest in that student. Yeah. Let them know that you care and that you want to see them do well. Yeah. And so they want to impress you. They want to do well as well. Kind of yes. like, you know, with mm -hmm. your parents, you want to mm -hmm. give them your best. And absolutely. so you have to build those relationships from the very beginning. Yep. And, you know, when I started teaching one of my mentor she kept emphasizing that she said forget you know trying to teach English day one you want to get to know your students yeah, get to know your students time, yeah. you yes. know bring the things that they care about and that they you know bring culturally relevant things to the classroom mm -hmm. to make them interested mm -hmm. you know and they just love it they mm -hmm. really do I love so, it yeah. so what's your um what are your thoughts I read something in a magazine um Michael hand me that um that magazine on the table real quick uh, I read something, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna paraphrase it, but then I want to read the exact quote. Okay, sure. As, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. As it relates to literacy. Sure. Um, thank you. Yeah. I read something here. This is from the American School Counselor Association. Uh, I think it's really cool that on page three here mm -hmm. you see our ad, shameless <laughs> plug, right? <laughs> right. But I was reading an article the other day, and I want to um, just read you this information here: diversity in children's books. Okay. 1% uh, in the books from the books that were published in 2018, they did a study of all the books up until that point. 1% had American Indians represented there. 5% had uh, Latinx. 7% uh, had Asian Pacific Islanders, uh, Asian Pacific Americans. 10% mm -hmm. uh, had African American, right, or African. 27% had animals. Wow. And 50% of the representation was white. See, and we wonder that that there, and it's so funny that you bring that animals up. Animals are more. Animals are more. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable. In the Latina Hispanic community, five percent. Asian and Pacific Islander, seven percent. African or African American, ten percent. Animals 
or fictional characters, 27% and 50% white. What's your thoughts on that? Go ahead. So great question. I'm so glad you brought that up. So literacy is so important. And, um, you know, as many people know, with African-Americans, um, our literacy rate is very low, mm-hmm. particularly because um, we don't see ourselves in the literature. So we don't like to read. Mm-hmm. I have yep. students even mm-hmm. I just finished uh, wrapped up summer school mm-hmm. and they gave us a ton of books to read for summer school. And mm-hmm. some of the books were culturally, culturally relevant and others were not. Mm-hmm. And so I had a kid said, Miss Bain, I don't like to read. And I said, no, you don't like to read because you can't see yourself in the literature. Mm-hmm. I said, let's find something that you would right. enjoy, right. you know. Yeah. Um, and there's a professor at Georgia State. Georgia State by the name of Dr. Goldie Muhammad. She wrote a book called Cultivating Genius and she talks about that very thing about Mm -hmm. how black and brown kids don't see themselves in the literature and how we have to cultivate that. We have to show them things that you know they can see themselves in. I know you guys you know when we were in school we were forced to read the same book. You know somebody finally got it. Aha if we give them choices you know and they extended that by saying if we give them choices with um, literature that includes people that look like them Mm -hmm. that talk like them that sound like them that you know have some or lifestyles, they'll be more interested mm-hmm. in reading. Mm-hmm. And so I think that we're finally moving towards that now, but it's probably going to take another full generation before we c- we're completely there. Wow. You know, um, you're right. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things. And then the thing is, sometimes when black and brown kids do see themselves in literature, it's like the struggle role. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not all struggling. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Please we're talk. educated. Thank you. Thank you. you know, we have professionals. Yeah. You know, there's so much richness in our culture, you know, in general, you know, across the board, all types of cultures. Right. And races, and sometimes we kind of go with this uh, stereotypical role, you know, that's perpetuated yes. not just through the media, you know, digital media, but through books, yeah, right. you know. And so we want to get beyond that, and that's my main thing. So, what are you? So, in your classroom, um, what are some tangible things that you've been doing to make sure? And then, what's the the demographics like with the students that you're teaching? Good question. So um, at the school where I teach, um, it's very diverse okay. um, in that, you know, we have students from all over the country. Okay. Um, I noticed that, you know, we have some of, some, some, some of the similar uh, things that I mentioned with African-Americans and not wanting to read with some other cultures because they can't see themselves in the literature. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I try to make sure that <laughs> in my classroom that I have um, a diverse uh, diverse. Uh, uh, set of books for students to choose from okay. um, so that they can um, have choices, see themselves in the literature, as I mentioned before, and also to give them context. Sometimes you need context, mm-hmm. you know, with what you're reading about. So if we're reading something in class, I'll try to have something that relates to that particular country or culture so that students can kind of get a better gist of things. That's another thing. Right. If they don't have any background information, like, why do I need to know this? Like, yeah. what is, why is it important to me? How does it relate to me? How can I connect? So it's those types of questions that we have to be able to answer for students. I love yeah. it. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I think that <clears throat> that's something that I have really noticed about myself. Yeah. Um, in the past couple of years, honestly. Um, because I grew up in a predominantly white community. Okay. And I'm um mixed Hispanic and white. Okay. Um, and I noticed that especially recently, all of the influences that I had growing up, whether it was books right? Like Babysitter's Club, Junie B. Jones, right? Like uh, Mary Kate and Ashley. Those were my like little yeah. chapter books that I read <laughs> when I was in elementary school. Yeah. They're all white girls. Yep. And um, even like thinking about the Disney Channel, mm-hmm. yeah. Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. We had a, a dress up day at my school that I was teaching at this past year and it was Disney character. Yeah. And I went and talked to my administrator about the fact that I didn't have many options of people that looked like me. And she was like, well, you could always dress up like, you know, someone from Toy Story or, you know, (laughs) Nemo. And I was like, okay, so you're telling me. Let me control my right right hand real quick. (laughs) Because statistically, there are more Disney princesses with blonde hair and blue eyes than with brown hair and brown eyes. And that is not proportionally correct Mm -hmm. to what... We look like as a as a world. A society, yes, yeah, absolutely. Sure. And it's been so. F- do they really tell you to dress up like? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you could be Woody. Right. Yep. Be Woody. <laughs> or you could be Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> yep. Who are still white? Pixar. <laughs> Who are still exactly. white? Facts. Exactly. Who are still white? Yeah. Wow. And you know, and it was even talking about like Disney princesses. There's not a single Hispanic Disney princess that is true. out there. Wow. And yeah. she was like, well, you could be Jasmine. You could be Pocahontas. I said, do you know how many times I've been Jasmine and Pocahontas? I am not of their right. like, 
culture. Right. But I, those are the characters that I have gone to my whole entire life. Yeah. Because that is the closest I look like. And how do you expect me to be Jasmine as a teacher at school and dress appropriately for school? You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And so my mom recently, Mm. um, found a book, um, which I think I've talked about on the podcast in an, an, earlier episode that we had with a media specialist that we had on, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's called Blended by Sharon M. Draper. And I finally found something where I felt seen Mm. Mm. and she was blended between black and white, Mm. but it was still that. Mm -hmm. And and as an adult, as a 30 year old woman, I am reading a kid's book, finally feeling seen. Mm. Watching in the Heights was the first time that I had ever I cried through the whole entire time that I watched In the Heights a couple of weeks ago because it was the first time that I felt represented. Mm -hmm. Wow. A a dancer and being Hispanic. So imagine you in your 30s. Imagine how these kids are feeling. Feeling. That's already feeling a certain type of way when they might look at the media. Absolutely. we have, you know, the the homes and families that they grew up in yep. is, is so different, it's different, right? And they're trying to find their identity, their place in the world. Yep. Yep. And when they come to a school or institution that's supposed to groom them, shape their hearts and minds, but they look at books and don't see representation yep. there, mm-hmm. then we wonder how come they're not excelling? How come they're not striving? Mm-hmm. How come they're not trying to go? You know what I'm saying? I just wonder how much more naturally they would grow. Right. Yeah. How much more naturally they would exactly. evolve if they would see themselves represented there with not the sob stories, right. but see themselves as the attorneys, yes. as the business owners, as the not just the ball players, but the ones who own the companies yeah. and the sports teams Absolutely. and being the engineers and the teachers. And yeah. Absolutely. So I'm glad to know that that's something that, of course, is on your radar and Absolutely. you're able to implement that and give a wide variety. I'm guessing that's something you would recommend to other teachers, not even in the English space, like speak to our audience that might just finding ways to show different type of representation and the importance of it in the classroom. Oh, absolutely. So not just like you said with English classes. So we know that English is the foundation of, you know, the different types of, um, you know, content that we teach. Mm -hmm. Um, But even for a science teacher or for a math teacher, when you're giving, let's say a math teacher, when you're giving a word problem, we can create those word problems to include names um, that are from that are from other cultures. Yes. (laughs) Um, we can include the uh, other things in the word problem that may relate more to the social situation of a student who's reading that that problem. Hey, you can know? I just say so funny, sure. but this is very serious, right? So maybe we don't get too creative with the names, right? Because <laughs> yeah. as opposed to Timmy and say Bon Chiqua, where you might have some parents that might be pissed off. Like, but did you? <laughs> well, I will say I choose to put my <laughs> students' names in the there problem. We go. Yes, there we go. You, there we go. If you put your, kid, they're like, hey, that's me. <laughs> yeah, and I was gonna say. So there may be some students in the classroom with that particular name. Right. So I think that's a safe <laughs> so, space. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that. But just finding ways to inc- incorporate their culture within whatever you're teaching and mm-hmm. there are ways to do it. We just have to be creative. It mm-hmm. takes planning, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you yes. know, and it takes, again, going back to what I said, getting to know your students. Who are my students? Where do they come from? What do they like to do? What is their family life like? And incorporating those things, things within your uh, content or whatever you're teaching. That's yeah. good. I think it all goes back to intentionality, though. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You have to be intentional about it. I mean, yeah. what that, so my mentor teacher, um, that was her word. Okay. I like, I'm going to be intentional and she wanted to be intentional about everything, everything. she did. Yeah. Her questioning, mm-hmm. um, the assignments that she created, mm-hmm. um, how she went over assessments, mm-hmm. literally everything that she did, she wanted to make, because otherwise you're wasting your time. I'm wasting your time. Yeah. And, and so if we want to be mm-hmm. effective teachers, we do have to be intentional with every single thing that we're we doing. To. Yeah. We have to. That's so, that's key. Intentional with everything. And it has to be, it can't be like a an afterthought. It has to be beforehand. You have to, and it has to be a constant thing in your mind. Yes. When you're planning, when you're interacting with the kids, see how they're reacting to what you're saying. Can they connect? Ask them certain questions to mm-hmm. see. Are they actually, you know, gauging what I'm saying? Can they, you know, relate to it? Is it making sense to them? And mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, it makes a huge difference for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I want to share something with you. Um, Michael, hand me that book under my Mac inside that box right there, right there by your you feet. You're pulling out all the resources today, <laughs> sir. Yeah, it's just some things are just flowing this way. Yes. So, um, so our company, the Jeremy Anderson Group, we're always looking for new and innovative ways. Yeah, toss that to me here. Thanks. We're always looking for new and innovative ways to 
enhance literacy mm-hmm. to be a blessing to school. So we find that came up with a fundraiser. Okay. I want to kind of share with you, right? Nice. So most fundraisers, schools are pushing cookie dough yeah. and yeah. Little donuts. Yeah, and- donuts, things like <laughs> yeah. that, which is cool, right? Yeah. But we said, what if you put together a writing competition? Mm. Is there a second copy in there, Michael? If so, give one a tour. Yeah. What if we put together a writing competition okay. um, where all the different kids could write, you know, a, a journal, where they come from, short stories, yeah. whatever. Um, some of them might even want to write in the form of a picture. Sure. Um, and then we have a writing competition and then like the final 50 that make the cut we put it in a book okay and then we publish it for the kids the kids become published authors wow. and then they sell the book as the fundraiser yeah that's an excellent idea yeah wow. so that's a copy of it there one of yeah. the schools Thank that you. we did it jones middle school some of the kids yeah. you can kind of just awesome. flip through some of the pages yeah. to check it out um, but it has a student spotlight it has the, the poem or the short story or oh something like goodness. that um you know what's your thoughts because we're always looking like okay you know, because there are some schools that's like, man, we really, really wanted mm-hmm. you all's curriculum, but we don't quite have the budget. We used up our Title One funds. And yeah. we're always thinking like, okay, how can we put you in the best position to be able to get in? So this fundraiser was a way they could raise money, mm-hmm. increase the literacy. Sure. And then, of course, it's a good look. You know, you can imagine the news station showing up, the press releases, right. you know, local school These students are published become authors. published authors. Yeah. Right. Um, but then it also helps them raise the money to get the curriculum, but it also increases and improves literacy. And as yeah. you see, some kids did pictures because they wanted to share their story or share their heart that way. Some did sure. short stories or poems. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what, 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 how, where does the importance of literacy lie in schools? What are some of the, um, the, the deficiencies and some of those different challenges that you see? And, um, and what can we do to enhance yeah. literacy? So um, when it comes to literacy, it's an ongoing thing. I think that we have to uh, focus on vocabulary, Mm -hmm. um, increasing vocabulary, and just, you know, kids that aren't from America, you know, we assume that, you know, there are certain words you should know. But Mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, especially with American language, words can be confusing. And so I think, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) So um, teaching vocabulary and also writing skills. A lot of students shy away from writing for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it goes hand in hand with reading. And so I think that if we can kind of encourage more creative, of writing through their own experiences. As you can see, the students in this book, as you mm-hmm. mentioned, you know, they're writing about their own experiences and people like to talk about themselves, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that if we can, you know, um, let them know the importance of it, because sometimes mm-hmm. we don't really see the importance of things right. until, you know, we need it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so I think that if we can kind of, you know, with schools, let them yeah. know how important, and then we know how important literacy is, but just in general, yeah. what um, benefit it would be to the students. And we could find some real <laughs> slick and creative ways. I'm going to give you this alley you, Tori. Um, <laughs> brain dump. Yes. I mean, we talked had a yes. guest a few months ago, a yeah. few weeks ago. Yeah, that uh-huh. was about... Okay, what's brain dump? So she... Um, was an ISS teacher. Okay. Oh. And she would have the kids come in and they would get a web. Okay. And they would literally just brain dump whatever was going on in their head mm. with zero penalty right. on just be what came out. Ooh, I raw, love it. Because just share it, write yeah. it out. Yeah. Because think about it, there's so much that's going on in their in their heads. Right. Yeah. There's so much going on at home. There's so much going on in their community. You know, and they need somewhere to get rid of it. Yeah. And so she told them, if there's profanity, it's I'm not going to hold okay. it against you. Yeah. Because I want you to just get it all yeah, out. And express yourself how you see fit. And, yeah. and I think that that right there can be, because we know that we use, you know, webs to help students um, brainstorm what they're going to be writing about. But I think that that brain dump is such a good way. For instance, I was watching, um, last night I watched Poetic Justice with Tupac mm, and, and, my favorite and Janet. <laughs> and, and it was just everything that, that she was narrating throughout mm-hmm. the movie, right? Yeah. All of her poems, it was everything that she was feeling in that moment. And that's the point of it. That's yeah. the point of writing. Exactly. It's to get out your emotion, right? right. It's, it's an art. Yep. It is right. one of the mm-hmm. arts. As a dancer, I dance to get my emotions out, out. Mm-hmm. to show how I'm feeling. Yep. And it's the exact same thing with writing. And we have to make kids or help kids find that. Yes. Right. Find that that joy of it. Find that that expressive part of it. And I think brain dumps, you're right, Jay, are a great place to do that Mm -hmm. because it really is letting them just be raw and real and then say, okay, let's take what we have here. Mm -hmm. 
and let's create something out of it. And right. when she shared it with us, I was thinking, like, that don't have to just be for ISS. That could be for anybody. Any classroom. That's what I was thinking. Because, <laughs> you know, and that's why journaling is so important. Even as an adult, mm-hmm. I journal. Yeah. Because it's the way, it's therapeutic. It's cathartic. You can get your feelings out. And sometimes when kids see it from that perspective, they're more willing to write. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned brain dump. I'm going to use that. Yeah. yeah. yeah just <laughs> take the first that. five, ten five, minutes ten or whatever minutes, and you know, just yep. get it all out. And, and sometimes we do a powwow anyway where students speak out loud about right. how their day is going, how they're feeling. But if we can get that down on paper, you yeah. know, translate those thoughts or transfer those thoughts rather. Yeah. 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 And it's a way to, you know, communicate. And I imagine that helps you. For the teacher, as they're reading it, to see what's going on inside the you world. You can that grow that them. connection. Yeah, there we go. Report. And matter of fact, we want you to stay around for part two. Okay, yeah. sounds good. And part two, I want to kind of hear, yeah, it's a lot we're going to unpack about yeah. your story. I want to hear how you're connected with kids. I want to hear about some of the challenges you've had, some of the knuckleheads, some sure. of the times you might even <laughs> say, you know what, maybe I go back to banking, right. but you fall through it. <laughs> so thank you okay. for hanging out with us for yeah. part you. one. Absolutely. To our listeners, show us some love, leave us a review, yes. let us know you're enjoying this episode in the comments and uh, come back for next week. We'll see you for part two. Bye guys. (laughs) Peace.